Hello and welcome. I'm Fernando, a GP in the UK. Today, we're looking at the NICE updates published in May 2024, focusing on what is relevant in primary care only. And again, in May, we have had very little new guidance relevant to primary care. In fact, there was only one guideline containing relevant information for us. The published technology appraisal on Atachapan for migraine prophylaxis. You may remember that we covered this to some degree last month when we reviewed the final draft with NICE guidance on the subject. To make up for the shortage of primary care updates, we will also go through the clinical signs and symptoms that differentiate between tension type headache, migraine and cluster headache. We will do so by reviewing the NICE guideline on headaches. If you're interested in the full headache guideline covering headaches other than migraine, please see the corresponding episode on this channel. The link is in the episode description. Right, we have a migraine-heavy episode, so let's jump into it. And let's start with an overview. Although we're covering a touch pant, the guidance of remedia pant is very similar. Both remedia pant and a touch pant are a new class of drugs, also known as JEPANTs, that have been developed specifically for the treatment of migraines. They are a calcitonin gene-related peptide, or CGRP, receptor antagonist, which works by blocking the CGRP receptor. And although the mechanism of action is not fully understood, we know that the CGRP is a protein found in the sensory nerves of the head and neck, and causes blood vessels to dilate, which can lead to inflammation and migraine pain. Unlike triptans, Japan's do not cause vascular restriction, so they do not have the same cardiovascular contraindications and cautions as triptans. Japan's can be used as an acute treatment of migraine and also as prophylaxis, but only if there have been at least four migraine days per month and where at least three previous preventive treatments have failed. Remed Japan is only recommended as prophylaxis of episodic migraines, whereas NICE has recommended a touch pant as prophylaxis for both chronic and episodic migraines. What's the difference between episodic and chronic migraine? The definition of episodic migraine is when there are fewer than 15 headache days per month. On the other hand, chronic migraine is when for more than three months there are at least 15 headache days a month, with at least eight of those having features of migraine. And here it is a good time to look at the clinical features of migraine compared to other types of headaches such as tension type headache and cluster headache. NICE has produced a poster that classifies the signs and symptoms for all three types of headaches. Let's have a look at it. The first thing to look at are the features of the headache in terms of location, quality, intensity and duration. So the location of the pain is bilateral in tension type headache, unilateral or bilateral in migraine, and unilateral generally around the eye, above the eye and along the side of the head or face in cluster headache. The quality of the pain is pressing or tightening and non-pulsating in tension headache, pulsating in migraine, although it can be described as throbbing or banging in young people, and it can be variable in cluster headache as it can be sharp, boring, burning, throbbing or tightening. As for the intensity of the pain, it can be mild or moderate in tension type headache, moderate or severe in migraine, and severe or very severe in cluster headache. And for the duration, we will say that it generally lasts from 30 minutes to continuous in tension type headache, 4 to 72 hours in migraine in adults, although it can be shorter in young people, from 1 to 72 hours, and from 15 minutes to 3 hours in cluster headache. So usually short headache but much more intense. Other factors that can help us differentiate between them are the effects that headaches have on daily activities and whether there are other associated symptoms. When considering the effects on daily living, we will say that tension type headache is not usually aggravated by routine activities. Migraines are aggravated by or causes the avoidance of routine activities and cluster headache causes restlessness or agitation. And when considering other symptoms, we must be aware that tension headaches don't normally have any. Migraine can be associated to light and sound sensitivity or nausea and vomiting. 
if there is migraine with aura, we need to remember that typical aura symptoms can occur with or without headache and include visual symptoms such as flickering light, spots or lines, and partial loss of vision, sensory symptoms such as numbness and pins and needles, and speech disturbance. But in order to diagnose migraine with aura, the symptoms must be fully reversible, develop over at least five minutes, and last generally between five minutes and one hour. Finally, in cluster headache, we will find, usually on the same side of the headache, associated symptoms such as a red or watery eye, nasal congestion or a runny nose, a swollen eyelid, forehead and facial sweating, and a constricted pupil or drooping eyelid. This is the summary poster that NICE has produced in the headache guideline. The link to it is in the episode description. Now that we have had a look at the clinical features, let's go back to the management. Currently, the most effective prophylactic options for people with chronic migraines who have already tried three prophylactic treatments are drugs that need to be injected, such as, for example, erenumab and galcatzenumab and Botox. So there are all treatments such as a touch of offer more choice for patients. When should we stop at touch a pound? We should stop it after 12 weeks if the frequency of migraines does not reduce by at least 50% in episodic migraine, that is fewer than 15 headaches per month, or at least 30% in chronic migraine, that is 15 or more headaches days per month, with at least 8 of those having features of migraine. Clinical trial evidence shows that a touch a pound reduces monthly migraine days more than placebo, and there is no clinical trial evidence directly comparing it with other preventive medicines. The results from indirect comparisons are uncertain, and it is unclear whether a touch of is better or worse than the other treatments. However, it has lower costs than the injectables, so it is recommended for preventing episodic and chronic migraine after three or more preventive medicines have been tried. So now, with that in mind, let's quickly look at the preventative treatment pathway that NICE has produced. First, for prophylaxis treatment to be considered, the patient needs to have at least four or more migraine days per month. In that case, we will give first, second and third line prophylaxis with propranolol, amitriptyline and tapiramate. If there is inadequate response, then we move to fourth line treatment. For episodic migraine, we can give Remegepant. For both episodic and chronic migraines, we have a number of injectable medications and Atogepant as the only oral medication. Finally, if it is chronic migraine, then the recommended treatment will be with Botox. Remegepant is an oral lyophilisate that should be placed on the tongue or under the tongue and it will disintegrate in the mouth and can therefore be taken without liquid. However, a Tojapant is a tablet to be taken orally. We have come to the end of this episode. Remember that this is not medical advice, and it is only my summary and my interpretation of the guidelines. You must always use your clinical judgment. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.